Hello, everyone. It's Bradford Speaks. Welcome back to the next episode of the Everything Matters podcast. I'm your host. Today's guest is going to be Ashley Mazel. Ashley has a longstanding real estate career, but recently has found her passion and has begun to pour herself into her nonprofit organization called Breath and Blossom. Ashley is someone who does a lot of work in the community. She's also a yogi and works a lot with people around self-help, self-healing, particularly people who have been victims of domestic violence and even horrible events such as human trafficking. So please join me in welcoming Ashley Mazel to the Everything Matters podcast. Let's get it cracking. Ashley, 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 welcome to the Everything Matters podcast. I'm so, so grateful to have you here with me today and so wonderful to see you. It's been a while uh, since I've seen you in person. So this is the closest that uh, that we can be in person. So thank you so much for being here today and coming to share your world with us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited for this podcast. Really great, Ashley. So I want to talk about first, you know, you're, you're a homegrown Charleston, South Carolina gal, right? Uh, one of my mm-hmm. favorite cities in the whole world is Charleston. I lived there for about seven or eight months, really just loved it. And, you know, it's not out of the question. I might move back there one day, to be honest with you. So really love Charleston. So uh, it's been a while uh, since I've been there, but I look forward to going back really soon. So I want to talk about what you're up to. I know you've done a few different things in your career and in your life, you know, and you have some specific things, some specific things that you're really passionate about right now. So tell us about your background, some of the things you've done in the past and where you are right now and what's really most important for you in this moment. Yeah, um, well, as you've mentioned, I'm a native Charlestonian, um, Charleston, South Carolina. I am a multi-generational descendant of Charleston. Um, My maternal side, um, everyone is from a place called James Island, um, right off of Folly Beach. Yeah, More tourist beach, yeah. So um, really a lot of my family's origins was from Barbados. Um, so really passionate about, you know, the Gullah Geechee culture um, and the preservation of it. Um, I could always do better to work hard on, you know, preserving that culture. Um, sure. You can think of it almost as what Creole culture is mm-hmm. to New Orleans. Very much different, but when you get West Central Africa and um, the Caribbean, that's kind of what um, is Gullah Geechee culture, which started from like the coast of Wilmington Island down to Jacksonville, Florida, which has so much influence on yeah. um, America's society today. I mean, from economically, (laughs) culturally, Mm -hmm. uh, arts, so, so much. And I think it's just so important for Black Americans to know about it because so many of us, when we trace our lineage back, you will find um, oftentimes, obviously, this culture being a part of your lineage, but also Mm -hmm. Charleston because we had, you know, one of the biggest slave ports and yeah. Um, so I'm really passionate (laughs) about where I'm from, um, like most people are about their hometown. Um, but as far as my background, um, I've spent about nine years within the scope of real estate, which is where our paths cross. Um, (laughs) as of a few weeks ago, I'm taking a little bit of a break. This market's okay. crazy. And I was mentioning to you yes, before, like my corporate structure is just so harsh. So sometimes I take little breaks. Yeah. Um, I've been a yoga teacher for a few years now. I've practiced yoga. Oh, for, yoga. Yeah, I've practiced yoga for almost a decade. I wouldn't say I have really committed to my mat until um, a few years ago where I was more consistent with my practice. Mm-hmm. Um, and what else? I started a nonprofit about a year ago, and that's been really fun, which is based in um, accessible wellness as well. Okay. So now I mostly am just focusing on 
being a yoga and mindfulness teacher and just running the nonprofit. Love it. Love it. Yeah, I follow you on Instagram and Facebook and, and you're always doing something. Some of the poses you do in yoga is pretty incredible. I'm like sitting there like, how in the heck is she doing that? Right. I've been practicing. <laughs> I've been practicing yoga myself for about uh, about 12 years. So uh, wow. uh, about twice a week I, I go to yoga. My wife is a yogi as well. And yeah. uh, she leads a yoga a yoga class. I mean, I just it's it's certainly something that I enjoy keeping my strength my strength together, my my stretching together, my breathing. It's really important, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I can certainly appreciate that you actually are committed to that the way you are. So, one of the things that we talk about on the Everything Matters podcast, Ashley, is and I want to get back to your nonprofit because I know that's really center for you, top of mind because I see a lot of activity that you're doing around that. But I want to talk to you a little bit about. Um, about failure, right? Um, talk to us about a time in your life where, you know, something just didn't go the way you planned it. Something, uh, you know, you failed at something and it's like, you know, my God, I can't believe, you know, what was it like for you and how did you pull yourself out of that particular situation? Yeah, I remember thinking about this recently. <laughs> I have a hard time wrapping my head around the word failure. Mm. I just don't, know what failure is like I think it's only failure if you're like not trying if you're not moving um you know I think you can only fail upward like yes we get setbacks and we have situations that make us uncomfortable but everything is uncomfortable like you deal with the hard emotion and you just yeah. push through um you know I've not been in a situation where I've completely like lost everything. Um, yeah. But I mean, if that happens, you can always just rebuild. You're still living, you're still breathing. And I, I don't mean that to sound insensitive because life can be very, very hard. Sure. But I mean, what really is failure? You knew so much more than where you were at if you have to rebuild from ground zero. There's, there's no ground zero, you know? I love it. I like that perspective. And you're right. It is their setbacks. Right. And mm -hmm. you only get stuck in that space if you don't keep pushing through. And that's one of the things that we talk about in the podcast all the time is, you know, what does that look like for you? And how do you get yourself out of that situation? Get out of your head. Basically, it's the conversation that you have with yourself around failure. Right. That gets you stuck there. So one of the things that we ask all of our guests on here is about failure, which we just talked about, and then about one of your most difficult challenges. Like we all go through things in life. Like you said, there's life is tough sometimes. You're right. And having to get through those things and still perform at a high level is something that we all deal with, right? And some people give up, some people push through. And a lot of times people push through and they don't really deal with it, right? They just muscle through it. But there's still that incomplete work that's there. And when that incomplete work is there, I find as a coach that you can't really move forward. You're only giving yourself the illusion that you're moving forward, right? So tell us about a situation that you had to deal with that was really difficult for you and how you moved yourself through that and caused a breakthrough for yourself. Yeah. Okay. So this is a really loaded question, Bradford. Um, so we this do. Is something, <laughs> it's something very personal. <laughs> so um, I guess we'll mention the mission of BTB or Breath to Blossom later. Okay. Um, but it's really based off of my lived experiences. So what Breath to Blossom does is we cater to uh, populations of survivors and overcomers of domestic violence, intimate partner violence, sex trafficking, and even commercial sex industry workers. So that umbrella is intimate trauma. And right. so many of us, it's not gender specific, um, suffer from these vicious cycles. It's a very cyclical thing as well, even if it's um, vicarious trauma that's been yeah. internalized. So I think there's a lot of foundational things that had created um, this sort of behavior and not having the proper tools. And we're all wired a little bit differently. And I had to understand myself a little bit more. I think where things really started to shift in all the intersectionalities of those populations I had mentioned, I can see how everything um, played out in my teen years and even some of my much earlier 20s. Um, bad relationships, you know, yeah, <laughs> um, I get it. a lot yeah. of women and sometimes, you know, men too, non-binary, forget the gender spectrum, um, being a true people pleaser. 
you know, and having mm. to, as an adult, really dissect that and assess what, what is this, this thing and yeah. this yeah. Um, lack of self-worth um, mm. and understanding worthiness and, and yeah. really nurturing that and just going on this path of self-discovery. But before yeah. that, and not really having the tools to make sound decisions to really slow my mind down because I'm a really like, I think we were talking about before I loved organized chaos and just you know, <laughs> right, some right. people may see that as a trauma response, but I think sometimes if you're a more creative person, sometimes you mm -hmm. might be a little bit wired that way too. So, um, as a people pleaser, um, I made decisions really young to be with people who, um, unfortunately were really suffering and really wounded and took a lot mm -hmm. of their anger out on me. And, um, I think that was maybe some internalized vicarious trauma from what I witnessed as um, a child as mm -hmm. well. Um, yeah. And some things I thought that might be normal. So made a lot of <laughs> bad dating decisions, yeah. found myself in a lot of abusive situations for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. The thing, unfortunately, is, is, you know, when you're young and you get out of something, people will say, well, now you know the red flags and you'll even tell yourself that. Like, I know right. the red flags. This right. will never happen to me again. But that's not always true. You're actually so still true. very susceptible to continue to keep attracting that same, like, person, same spirit, the Tyrone, the yeah. Ramon, the Simone. It doesn't matter <laughs> the, the socioeconomic right. status, the... Right. The ethnicity, the gender, it's like the same person. Same person in a different over, body, right? Different color, over. different hair. It's the same person. Over and over. I got that. Um, and, you know, I think as women too, especially when even sometimes faith and religion, you know, has molded you. Um, being in schools for a while that had really oppressive teachings um thinking that oh my gosh i have to stay committed to this person because i'm living in sin or right. you know, that's just right. what i'm supposed to do and the perfectionism the disease of perfectionism that so many of us carry people of color women women of color just having to get it right of you know being in a family yeah. where people marry so early and they just stay committed forever to the same person they've been since they're 17. It's like, okay, I've just got to hang on um, and <laughs> just fall off. And then there's nothing right. left of me. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, when I had experienced things like that, when I finally um, was single, you know, I just had a really self-destructive lifestyle where I was yeah. still really young. Um, I found myself in really bad decisions, substances that were abused um yeah. some of it i can't say were my fault i can say that i was in some exploitative situations as well okay um yeah but yoga was in my life but it was very very shallow and and superficial and then i started to kind of make a little bit more space to find more restorative practices and that was amazing um just to awesome. really self-assess because I was still in the mindset of doing, trying, being perfectionism, which is always counterproductive, but then finding that you can Whatever. really, yeah, just rest in your being and there's nothing to accomplish. You know, there's nothing to attain. Just really going into the yeah. inner attunement is, is really what, what helped everything. Um, and it even helped me get out of one of my last really abusive relationships um, and stay out of abusive relationships, which has been good. Yeah. Um, but also there was just one day on my mat where I was like, you know, I wasn't living extremely self-destructively anymore, still drinking a lot mm -hmm. of wine, um, uh -huh. but still doing things that didn't serve me. And there was just one day right. on my mat where I really cut everything out. And it was just like, I don't have to be responsible for anyone else other than myself. Got that. It was just like this, like we know that, but it was just like this epiphany where it just was like a switch went off and that changed mm. everything. And I just chose to be happy and just leave. And it's, you know, it's always scary to get out of those situations. You really have to. Sure. Come in. So sure. um, I took that step again and 
I mean, it was hard, <laughs> you know, because there's a lot that goes into that, but it's, it's been, you know, so, so worth it. And yeah, yoga has saved Great. my life in so many ways. I can't even, <laughs> like, <laughs> even I can tell hours. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell it's meant everything for you. So, I mean, really great. Thank you for for being vulnerable uh, and sharing all that with us. And I know that when you speak about that, you're speaking to a lot of different women out there, perhaps even men mm -hmm. who are dealing with those types of situations. And one of the things that you said to me that that I'm clearly ple uh, very present to is the impact of our childhood and what it has on us. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, nobody wakes up or nobody's born hating anyone. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that you're not wired to hate. You learn to hate. Mm -hmm. It's a learned behavior, right? Uh, you learn to you, you learn to uh, you're actually born to love. I would even argue, right? Mm -hmm. Kids are born to just when you look at a puppy, right? They don't know. I mean, even my dog, my dog loves me no matter what I do, what I say, <laughs> what it don't matter. I mean, he just comes back to me and he's looking at me with a puppy dog guy. He just loves me, right? They say a dog is a man's best friend. It's because it's that unconditional love. Yeah. So we learn how to behave in this way. And there's so many people who are walking around dealing with trauma mm -hmm. and it impacts performance in life. You know, I've learned as a coach is that you have to go back and complete those situations with people. You have to get completion. And sometimes that requires confronting your abuser, mm -hmm. right, in those situations and confronting them, but also forgiving them at the same time mm -hmm. and letting them off the hook for what they did to you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and being responsible for what you create for yourself going forward. And it sounds like you've done a lot of that. So I really acknowledge you for your honesty, your openness and willingness to be vulnerable here uh, in this uh, in this environment. Thank you. OK, Ashley, great segue into the next segment of our conversation. I want to talk about Brett the Blossom. You've mentioned it on a couple of occasions. And I know this is something that's really near and dear to your heart. And it's something that you're really proud of. Right. So talk to us more about this nonprofit, why you created it, how it came about, how, what your vision is and the impact that you're looking to make. Uh, by having that organization out there. Yeah, so Breath to Blossom is literally my heart outside of my body. <laughs> it's a nonprofit, it's still a startup. Um, we started about a year ago um, and we've had a lot of growth in that amount of time. So what we do is we provide trauma-centered mind-body therapeutic programs mm -hmm. and mental health services to survivors of intimate trauma. So under that umbrella, again, you have survivors, overcomers, and victims of domestic violence, intimate partner violence, just intimate abuse, commercial sex industry workers, um, those who may have had a long career in the sex industry, or yeah. even um, those who have been trafficked, sex trafficking. Um, so it sounds very broad, but really yeah. all of those things are so interconnected. A lot of organizations that serve each of those populations individually, they all go to the same resources. <laughs> okay. And also when we detach the story and we look at the physiology and we look at the nervous system, it's the same impacts typically to the mm -hmm. brain, to the nervous system, same impacts. Okay. Different story. Interesting. Um, Interesting. So that's why I try to give it that umbrella term of intimate trauma, but not to invalidate anyone's story or, or you know, their own struggle. Right. But um, it's all kind of going to the same center. Outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah. Really great, man. I really, I'm, I'm so grateful that you're doing this work. There's so many people, like I said earlier, that could utilize this kind of therapy, this kind of support in whatever they're dealing with. Unfortunately, we are living in a world where these things happen far too often that I like to admit. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, nowhere where we can't use support in those areas for the people that are experiencing those things. So thank you for, for the work that you're doing in that space. Who do you attribute? If you could pick one person or maybe two people or whoever it might be, or maybe it's an event, something that has made the biggest impact for you in becoming who you are, who inspires you? to be who you are being today? Ooh, um, my mom and dad. <laughs> I love that. Um, the biggest impact on me, and I look so much at their lives. And um, even though my dad passed away this month. Oh, or, oh really? Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. It's okay. Wow. Um, next month, we'll make it three years. Wow. Um, and so he's a really big part of even why Breath to Blossom exists. Um, 
and just all the intersectionality of all those populations and seeing yeah. how that has played out in my life and seeing both of my parents' stories. So unfortunately, um, I feel like I've received divine confirmation before I started Breath to Blossom that my dad would be okay with uh, sharing this. I won't yeah. go into that whole story. You know, I'm long-winded, Brad. <laughs> it's okay. But <laughs> my um, dad is also, unfortunately, a survivor of um, sex trafficking um, via the Catholic Church. So wow. uh, I'm wow. half Italian, but, you know, he left the Catholic Church. But that happened to him as a really young boy. Um, wow. Unfortunately, so that's a big reason why you know after he passed and I, that story was really confirmed for me yeah. it's just seeing the trajectory of his whole life just this brilliant person and how things played out um and just how it con impacted everything he was connected to and the choices he made yeah. um it just it made me feel just so terrible um and trafficking is something that will probably always continue it's what you know yeah how you know, on my maternal side, my family got here, unfortunately, um, and what's built this economy and so much. And it's so important for yeah. everyone to understand what trafficking looks like in the States and what it looks like in every community or their own community, because it looks different on the West Coast or New York, Texas, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and every city within it, it's going to look different. And it looks way different today than it even looked mm. five years ago. Um, and wow. it looks way different than what we see in third world countries or what Hollywood um, portrays it as, unfortunately. So it's good that there's more light shed on the Jeffrey Epstein, the stuff that's actually what it kind of looks a little bit more like from people wow. that we typically respect people who um, earn much, much higher incomes than the average right. American. Um, and even what the neighborhood traffickers look like, it's important to know those things. Um, and it's, ugh, it intersects so much with domestic violence and even with law yeah. enforcement. It's a lot to get into. Um, wow. but That's another show right there. Oh my God. <laughs> my parents and their whole story is like, I and just seeing how those things before I, saw it what it was and seeing me acting out some of the same behavior in my life um and taking a step back and saying whoa mm -hmm. like what can i do with all of this and wow. what can i you know all this time i've wasted i can learn but how can i apply what i learned yeah. um and so they have inspired me to do a lot and i don't think they even realized it <laughs> awesome. hey you know it's great when you have somebody that inspires you and they don't even know that they inspired you right I mean, mm -hmm. like they mean so much to you and they have no idea that they're actually the one, the driving force behind what you're out yeah. to cause in the world. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really appreciate you bringing up the different looks of sex trafficking. Right. And, and and you may not recognize it. So it's important for us to be educated on what it might look like here, what it might look like there, the different faces of, of, of human trafficking so we can know and maybe be a sounding board for that. And you're right. So much over the last few years has come out around some of the things in Hollywood and some of the people in Hollywood and what's really going out there and going on out there in that world. And it's really scary. Uh, it, it makes me hold my kids a little bit closer, a little bit tighter uh, because you just never know what's going on. So uh, unfortunately that's the world that we live in. And fortunately at the same time, organizations like yours, Breath the Blossom and doing the work that you're doing, causing more awareness about that uh, will make a difference. I believe that. And uh, so thank you thank for that you. again. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, Ashley, so on the Everything Matters podcast, we're all about results and about performance, right? So inside of this nonprofit that you that you put together, Breath to Blossom, what are some of the results uh, that you're seeing people get out of being involved in some of the therapies that your nonprofit offers? Definitely increased hope. Um, just that we're existing increases hope because a lot of people sure. don't self-identify or realize what happened to them when they go through these situations yeah. or are just silent about it. So offering that community um, also increases confidence. The actual work increases so much confidence, which translates in so many other areas of sure. life. Um, slowing down, having that clarity, getting in touch with self again, feeling like you have agency over your own body again, um, feeling like you can really just take back your power 
that yeah. translates over yeah. into your, your finances, um, what you feel confident for, you know, jobs to, to take yes. on, what to study, what sort of education to pursue, um, just increased range of motion. Like I said, there's so many wellness modalities. Um, one of the core parts of our program is uh, yoga therapy and very trauma centered mm-hmm. yoga. So we have all sorts of modalities that we use, but we do have a very specific um, curriculum and it's been designed through the lens of someone who um, has been impacted by a lot of this. Um, wow. So all of our instructors are, are trained in all of this um, and a lot, but um, excellent. Good results. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you for that. So actually one question I think maybe some of our guests might want to know is, well, you know, I'm in Connecticut for God's sake, or I live in California, right? How do you service people who may be in different states? It's, it can't all be done locally right now. You know, with COVID, everybody's going gone online now. So I know you've done some work to make sure that this work is accessible for people anywhere. So what do you have set up to support people that might not live there locally in Charleston? Yeah, so if you are not here in Charleston, a lot of our counselors uh, do teletherapy. Uh, Our instructors can set you up on Zoom or FaceTime. And I would do my best to try to do the legwork or someone on our team would to find maybe a neurological-based chiropractor, maybe similar to the one we have on our team, which is very trauma-sensitive work and does wonders for the nervous system, as well as a trauma-sensitive physical pelvic floor, physical therapist um, as well, Um, and look for sliding skill rates. So we would try to do all of that for you. So we'll never turn anyone, you know, down. Man, be really committed. And I I, I really get the sense of your commitment to this, Ashley. And I really am so thankful again to have you doing this. So if someone wants to find out more about Breath to Blossom and how they can actually take advantage, because, hey, everybody out there listening, maybe it's not you. Maybe there's a way that you can, there's something that's going on around you that you're not seeing. Maybe it's a family member that, that, a family member that you want to help and support in some way, right? Breath to Blossom can do that. So actually, how would someone find Breath to Blossom? Where can they find you on social media, uh, on the internet? How can they get in contact with you? You can follow our social accounts, Breath to Blossom, uh, all spelt out. Uh, We have Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, spelt out Breath to Blossom. Never hesitate to reach out. You can check out our website at breath2blossom.org. And if you feel called to donate, um, you can do that on the website as well. And it makes real healing impact in our community. Um, We just opened our wellness center um, here in the Charleston area. So Congratulations. Very nice. Thank you. So we are truly not for profit. So anything you contribute helps tremendously. I love it. I love it. Well, Ashley, I just want to say thank you again for being on the Everything Matters podcast today and for sharing your world with us and all the things that you're out to cause in the area of trafficking and other types of neurological and psychological trauma that people are dealing with. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. Uh, So that's all I've got for you today. If there's anything else you want to say finally before we end this uh, interview? Um. Know what, trafficking like. <laughs> know what trafficking looks like in your area. Um, you can always call the National Human Trafficking Hotline. You can, if you suspect anything, you can always uh, slide someone that information very discreetly. Same thing with any DV domestic violence situations as well. And tell people about our organization. Um, I could talk all day, Bradford. This has been so much fun. We have to do this again. <laughs> Very good. We'll definitely do it again. Yeah. And I think it's really important uh, to get educated on what that might look like, right? Because people are probably wondering, well, how can I recognize it in my city? How can I recognize it as something going on? Where would you direct them to go and educate themselves on what it might look like in these different spaces? I would first go to the resources on the National Human Trafficking Hotline. I would also even, one of my favorite people, um, As far as studies I've gathered, I love Dr. Melissa Bartley. She's very much real about also what happens within the sex industry, the commercial sex industry. 
I do not have a problem with sex workers, but we also, I say, if you're going to be in the game, you've got to be real about the game and what right. really happens and the harm that does happen within um, adult entertainment in all sides of the industry as yeah. well. So as a uh, people, uh, in America, instead of just looking at the poor, poor children in overseas, yes, we need to be helping those people, but right. we got to know what direction to go in, you know? Yes. So uh, we never go straight to the source. A lot of people end up judging those people. So don't be afraid to share resources. Don't be afraid to listen to people. Don't be afraid to be curious about people and just connect and just slow down, just slow down. <laughs> So simple. Got that. Kind Got of. that. <laughs> Ashley says, slow down, guys. Slow down and live your life, right? Be in, be in your life. Be in your life. Yes. Right? Well, Ashley, thank you again for being on the Everything Matters podcast. Please come back again, maybe sometime in a few months, and update us on what's happening with the organization, okay? We'd love to. Thank you All so right. much for having me. Thank you. Take care. See you soon. This is Doris Brown's baby boy. We out. <laughs>